Good evening, guys. Well, we had another productive product <coughs> productive day at the car boot. This time at Alstrom, it's pretty busy. We were there a lot longer today than we were at Stalham yesterday. Before it, uh, we always pack up once it starts to sort of go, you know, go quiet. Um. Yeah, and today I did come home with some goodies. Uh, that green tub is a tub of Lego. Uh, I'm not going to go into details with that in this video. I'll do another video for the Lego channel. Small and small. But uh, I will go into detail with what else I've got in here. There is one more thing which is still in the car, but I didn't have enough hands to bring it up, so I left it there for now. Um, should be going over to Mum's tomorrow, so uh, I'll bring it back then. That's just a um, bicycle foot pump. It'll make life a lot easier than pumping bike tyres up with a hand pump. So, what have we got? We've got two of these. 50p each. Well, actually, I've got four of these. I've got two brand new ones in these bags. Whoops, again, 50p each. Just a couple of spotlights. <clears throat> um, I have toyed with the idea of perhaps putting them up on the wall above the computer. Um, so I've got two of those. There's one. There's the other one. Like I said, they're both brand new with these ones. I could argue for 50p. <coughs> I've got another, another two of those over there. Um, and I've got several of these lamp holders. Your typical uh, British BC or bayonet cap lamp holders. Such a BC Batten lamp holder. Um, they used to use this style of light holder in bathrooms, but uh, they don't do that here now. I've got several of those. The rest are in that bag. I'll get to that bag in a moment. Oh, good. The computer's finally booted up. Right. Uh, I think the only other thing in here is about ten. Oh, no. There's some more of these lamp holders in here. I don't actually know how many I bought, but they're 25 pence each, so... And, uh... Oh, no, um... I've already broken one in the shed once. Uh, not the shed, the workshop at Mum's. Uh... As you'll see in the, uh, workshop video, I've got a light like this up in the lean-to part, and... Well, if I break another one, who cares? I've got plenty here. <laughs> There's five, and I... Five, six, seven... I think eight in total. Anyway, the other thing I've got... were these, uh... Spotlight bulbs. And I believe I've got ten of those at 50p each. And you're probably wondering, why the flippin' hell did I go and buy a load of these? Well, last Christmas, what I wanted to do was change those white bulbs to some coloured ones, just to be a bit decorative. But uh, I tried looking on eBay, and I could find them on eBay, but they wanted like one ninety nine per bulb or something like that. So, uh, nice green one. I always managed to pull a green one out. But, uh, found these today, and the guy wanted 50p each, and he had 10 of them, so I just bought all 10. So, uh, this Christmas coming, I will put these up in the cupboard out of the way, I'm not going to put them in yet. But, uh, this Christmas coming, I can now change all those white bulbs to some pretty coloured ones. I don't know what colours I've got, I didn't really look. But uh, I've got a green one there, they're um, screw fit, so they will fit the one up there. They're um, R64s, I'll just say on the box somewhere, oh yeah, on the top, R64 reflector. 
because that's the size my um, spotlight's up on the wall there take. Which doesn't seem to be a common size in these coloured bulbs. Mind you, these old incandescent light bulbs, even these coloured ones, you know, they're getting a bit hard to come by now because of all this energy saving stuff. You know, the way I see it, if you're willing to pay for the electric, then who cares? It's your electric bill. Right. Actually, speaking of light, I'm going to turn the other one on. There we go. I do have a new toy as well, but I'll get to that for in a bit. I'll do the boring stuff first. Let's just stack these black lamp holders up out of the way. Shall we see what colours we've got? So I've found one green one already. What's this one? Oh, this is a yellow one. Yellow. Yeah, they all look good. Yeah, that one's a good one. I don't know what the wattage is of these. But I think these are, weren't, or used to be used in the old style disco lights. Uh, what's this one? Is that another yellow one? I think so. Yeah, I've got another yellow one. I don't know what I can do. I'll uh, stand you there. Now you can see me and the boring things I'm going through. So I've got two yellow ones. three yellow ones, so I could do all yellow if I wanted to, or probably all green, I've probably got loads of green in here as well. What's this one? Yeah, there's another green one. Wrong end. <laughs> What's this one? Oh, found a red one. So we've got a nice red one. Just to prove it is a red one. <laughs> Another yellow one. I think they're all yellow. I don't want them to be all yellow. Wrong end on this one again. Oh, no. I think this one's another red one. Yep. So, so far, two red, two green, and five yellow ones. I think. Something like that. Put this one up. Three green, there's another green one. And this one, the last one, is another red. So we've got three red, three green, and five yellow. Ah, I'll do something with those. Right. We have several other variety of spotlights there. Um, including some really big ass ones like that, but I didn't really have a use for those, even though they were tempting, especially the blue ones. But uh, I just thought, you know, what on earth am I going to do with those? At least I can use these. I've got light fittings I can use these ones in. We did have some larger ones, the next size up to these, which I'm thinking I should have got as well, because these other spotlights I've got um, do take the larger ones. So, I'm just going to pop these down here. Oh, I think they're 40 watt. There's a sticker on this one. For use in display and decorative lighting applications. A British made quality lamp. I don't know if Crompton still exists. Switch off supply before changing lamps. Nah, there's no fun in that. I was testing bulbs earlier with the power on because it was easy. I was testing these bulbs, I'll just grab them. But, uh, here we go, here's the other two non new ones. They're exactly the same, but these ones are obviously been used. I'm not going to show you the other one because they are all the same. I've got a goodie bag here. There's uh, more of these baton light fittings. I could drill them all up, uh, drill the holes and put them all up above the uh, lounge window. 
and put coloured light bulbs in for Christmas. <laughs> I've got enough coloured light bulbs to get in any of these things, did I actually get? Two, four, six, eight, ten of these as well. Uh, but the other thing I got was some of these. I think there's eight of these I got. That's a 25 watt. I've got three yellow ones in here as well. I've got three pink. Well, they're Crompton as well. I have tested them, they all work. These are the ones I was testing live. Uh, a blue and a green one. Your, um, what do they call them? Festoon lighting strings. These are all 25 watt, I believe. Oh no, apparently this green one's a 60 watt. Well, that was dim for a bloody 60 watt. Well, I suppose it would be as it's coloured. Pink ones are all 25 watt. That one's worn off, I can't see it. But I'm assuming. Then we've got a yellow, a couple of yellow ones that are 60 watts. And yeah, they're both for 60 watts. And then we've got one that's uh, 100 watt. Made in England, it doesn't. Well, these two 60 watt ones are Osram. Made in France. Oh, they're French. I thought Osram was um, German. This one's made in England, but I can't see the. Uh, bell, maybe, is It's got a picture of a bell on it. Could be bell. Right. Now, there's one other thing I did get. I'm going to bring you in for a closer look. It's probably not the best thing on the planet, but... Another camera. I have no idea what the picture quality is going to be like. Probably not a lot, not very great. It's only 4.1 megapixel. Um... It's basically a cheap ass camcorder, that's all this is. But it's got all the functions of a normal one. Um, it's got batteries in it. You can actually take the battery box off. It's a bit hard to do it at one handed, but it does slide off like that. And there's two AA batteries in there. Uh, it does work. I have had it working. There's no SD card in it, so I can't film with it. But I could soon whack a SD card. I've got a gigabyte card kicking around here somewhere. Uh, it's got the carry handle on it. It's got your zoom button up here and photo button because it takes photos as well. This top bit is just a viewfinder. The camera is actually under there. Um, when it's not zoomed in, the quality is pretty much the same as this picture quality. So I could use this if I really want to. I might do a video later on with it, just to uh, see what it comes out like. But if anything, I, you know, I'll have a spare camera here to go to, should one break down. All the screen moves. Uh, it's got, that's just your viewfinder there, probably to take your photos with. I'm sure I saw a mic on this somewhere. I'm not sure what that little adjuster thing is on there, if it's like a focus or something. Or, you know, a light adjustment or something, I don't know. Unless you're on off button. It's got a button in the middle, but I can't quite read what it's meant to be. I think it says shutter or something. Volume control, which I assume is for playback. And it's got resolution button. And then below that, preview. And then below that, mode. And uh, down the bottom, if you pick up this little bit of rubber, you've got the SD card hole, or slot, micro USB, and uh, um, a DC jack, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea as I do a lot of filming in the flat. I could use a DC jack. Uh, and then there's an AV, and that's it. So I've got AV out as well, so I can uh, connect it to a TV. So it's got, you know, 
Stupidly enough, this only cost me three pounds at the car boot. So, you know, for three pounds for a working digital cheap ass camcorder that um I could use as an emergency backup or that works just as well as this one. I may use this use that one. Especially if the mic is better. But uh, until I actually shoot a video with it, we're not gonna know, are we? So uh as soon as I find that gigabyte memory card, I'll do another one. We'll shoot a video with it, and so it's got a pair of good batteries and a good pair of Kodak, you know. So yeah, don't know what the brand is. It's got DV or some or LV or something written up there. Then it's got 4.1 mega megapixel and digital video TV um, playback, digital video camcorder. NTSC slash PAL. And there's a few extra buttons under this I forgot to mention. Uh, we've got menu and OK up the top here above my finger. Uh, then there's up down arrow buttons above my finger. Then below that is left right buttons and display playback button. So. The way it feels, it doesn't feel like extremely cheap quality. It does feel at least semi decent. And I've had like that, um oh, I don't know if I actually used that footage actually. I had a um in the first lot of computer parts I got and computers, I had a little uh digital camera that looked a bit like a pen that you could clip on like a shirt pocket or something. And um, that really did feel like cheap, shitty plastic. Well, actually, it was just cheap, shitty plastic. It didn't even work. That's <laughs> how so cheap and shitty it was. Uh, this feels a lot better. There's a fair bit of weight to it, so... You know, considering it's only got two AA batteries, it's not the battery that weighs it down. I'm not sure if you could charge it from, like, the USB or the DC jack and put, like, two rechargeable batteries in there. That might be a possibility. I'll, uh, I've got the booklet with it. It's actually up here. I've got the booklet and a, uh, a um, tripod with flexible legs on it. That came with it as well. And there's the instruction manual. So I'll have to have a little read through that. <laughs> Attention. Please make sure that you insert the SD card before using it. Well, at least that didn't sound like Chinglish. <sighs> Bless the Chinese, they do do their best with their English, don't they? It's just a shame they get paid shit money to make crap for us. <clears throat> but, uh, not a lot you can do. There's some free cobwebs or something with this. Is that picking up? No. There it is. <laughs> right there. This doesn't. This camera doesn't seem to like anything white. You see, it always takes a few seconds before anything on that white paper comes into focus. <laughs> I wonder why. Well, at least it's a start. <clears throat> you know, as they say, when you start a new hobby or something, or like I have, and like we're talking to these, or making these vlogs, I should say, you know, got to start at the bottom and work up, so, at least I'd have gone from a sort of standard camera like this pink thing here, I'm using a black one, which is basically like this, can't remember what the megapixel is on this one, but the one I'm using is a 14 megapixel, with a crappy microphone, because it's just really one designed like this where it's more designed for um, still photos rather than the videos I do. So I'm surprised it's still working. <coughs> In fact, I've got a couple of um, black spots on the display that I look at. I think that's my only bugbear with this camera, actually, is the pissy little display it's got. Look at that. 
there's a bigger display on the camera I'm using that does make it a little hard to um, see exactly what I'm pointing the bloody camera at but like I said it's a just a cheap little camcorder it's a pity I couldn't find a make on it because uh, I'd have looked it up to see exactly what it was it's got a sticker on the back here that says keep 20 centimetre well no idea what that means well, there might be something in the uh, book I like it anyway And, uh, you know, as I said, you've got to start somewhere, and there's a lot of YouTubers that stop, started at the bottom of the ladder, and you just work your way up. You know, when I eventually reach the uh, £60 limit on my AdSense, and maybe I'll put that towards a camera, and then perhaps use the one I'm currently using back, you know, to take um, still photos for eBay and whatnot, which was its primary use before I started uh, playing with it. I enjoy doing it. I don't, I don't know why. I didn't think I would actually enjoy talking away to a camera as much as I do and just broadcasting random thoughts and random stuff on the world of YouTube. I'm not really fussed about the AdSense if I get a few because so I've actually watched it I only get I might be lucky to get 10 pence per day if I'm lucky I would actually have to be very lucky I think to get that so you just imagine at that how long it would actually take me to get up to the um, payout limit in fact why well, don't I have a quick look? Because um, I am remembering to monetize the videos. That does help. No, that hasn't changed since yesterday. So, if anyone thinks you know you can make loads and loads of money, no. Not someone like me. Not when you've just sort of really started getting into it, at least. You really, really need to put up the sort of content that people are going to watch so you grab thousands and thousands of subscribers I think I've got 70 something sub subscribers and I'm happy with that plus I probably get you know the random YouTubers that are browsing YouTube that might glimpse at my videos as well so I'm happy I'm not a fuss pot I'm not greedy you know my subscribers will increase as and when well just that really as and when there we go look 1p is what I've generated I told you that is what so um if I said I was in it for money that would be a lie <laughs> but uh, you know if it increases it increases it increases in its own pace and that's taken me probably over two years to get to 55 quid so you know, if I really wanted the money I'd have put a lot more effort into it but uh, the other problem I've got as you know I'm only in a one bedroom flat so there's not a lot I can do I'm not really like some of these YouTubers that would pick a popular subject in the news and give my views on it because that's not really what I want this channel to be about um, that's why I don't really talk about religion or politics that much because that's just not what I want this channel to be about it's about you know talking about the random shit I might pick up at a car boot sale I think I paid a pound for all those light bulbs by the way yeah it was one pound so one pound for those five for those two pounds for the spotlights three pounds for that camera um, that's the same guy who had the camera 
the other camera, the car boot that I spoke about, um, at yesterday's car boot, I mean, um, he was at this one today, and, uh, I didn't realise at first, because I just come across the store and saw that camera, and I was like, oh, this was like a decent little, or, well, not decent, a nice little camcorder, so, and then I looked up and realised who it was, I was like, oh, hello, it's you again, you were opposite us yesterday, <laughs> Um, but the other one he had, he wanted 20 quid for, but it did have a, I think he said a 64 gigabyte memory card in it, SD card, and, uh, I think all it did was take still photos to put on the SD card, it didn't take, didn't put the video on, because it put the video to, um, some recordable DVDs, which came with it as well, but, uh, really for what I want to use it for I want to be able to like perhaps plug the camera straight into a PC like I can this because I can use exactly the same cable down here because both these cameras have the same micro USB port and uh, hopefully my computer will recognize it as a mass storage device um, like I get the um, options on this when I plug it in, I get two options come up, mass storage device or PC camera, so I can use it as a web camera if I really want to. Um, so, yeah. That's the other reason I opted for that one, because otherwise I'd have had to have found a way to get the footage of the DVDs, and that just seemed a, more of a hassle for a lot more money, so I thought I'd start with this one. Could well, as I didn't have the budget anyway. I've really got to sort of save what I've got left because I've got posting to do and groceries to get, and I've got plenty to cover me for that. So I think I've bought enough goodies for now, including the two items I bought on eBay: my um, KVM switch cables and KVM switch. So, uh, as soon as they come in during the week, which should be around Tuesday-ish, I'll uh, be doing a video setting it all up there. Hopefully. Ugh, fucking spam I'm getting in. Just for the hell of it, I signed up to try and get an, a credit card, which was instantly turned down like I knew it would. But as soon as I put in my bloody email... I've got nothing but fucking spam in my Yahoo account. Now, all that, what I've just highlighted there, is all electrician courses. All the same. Private medical insurance. No, I don't want that. Private medical. Lauren Mitchell, make £3,500 a day. Yeah, if I actually believe that was genuine, which I don't. UK credit, there we go. I said, probably more than half my emails in my inbox are now about to get spammed. There we go. Everything else is actually on websites I use. Norfolk Freegal, which is a good site to use if you want to get uh, free goods. Twitter, Mozilla Firefox, eBay eBuyer, I don't really use that a lot, but it is a site I'm interested in, like having a look on now and again, and Facebook, so I can actually delete those because I don't need to look at those, but they are legit sites. Anything else can go in the bloody spam folder. But uh, that is why you sh <laughs> should be careful of what you sign up to online as well, you know, lesson learned, don't sign up for a friggin' Um, credit card online, unless you're going to the actual site, don't do it through an email. I've just made that mistake and now I'm getting spammed to hell for it, so... Probably wasn't even something that existed, it was probably just to get your email address. So uh, all these companies can then, uh... Or it might have actually been legit, but... You know, they probably sell off your friggin' email address to all these companies and... You end up getting spammed full of crap you don't want. So, yeah, lesson learned. I'm not doing that again. I think I completely went off the subject on what I was actually 
talking about before I got onto this. But I can't remember what it was. <laughs> oh well, couldn't have been that important. Who did you... 60 notifications, because I haven't been on today, I've been out all day. Uh, Outlook. I think I've got three active email addresses at the minute. I only really use two. My Yahoo is my main email address. My Hotmail account is basically one I use when I sign up to a lot of websites that aren't really important. Important websites I sign up to, like eBay and PayPal, go through my other one. Then I've got a Gmail account for YouTube. Because <laughs> it's all in one now, isn't it? With your Gmail and your YouTube and Google+, Plus, it's all bloody under one thing now. Oh, four notifications. Who have I pissed off today? Oh, Julian Eilert. Illet? Is it Illet or Eilert? I'm not sure. Eilert. <laughs> yeah, not sure how to pronounce that. My apologies if he ever sees this video. <laughs> uh, he's just uploaded a video, and Siam I am. He's liked the video, and he's comment on it. Cranfield Hospital. <laughs> That's the um, video um, with the theme hospital fail where it actually has Grand Theft Auto on the disc for some obscured reason. I'm not sure why. Really not sure why. Ooh. Logan Life is part of the video. Now my videos do this sometimes and the thumbnail won't show. The only way I can get a thumbnail to show is when I upload it, where it's got the little thing, you know, spinning around as it uploads the video, is to leave it until it stops. Even once it's done uploading, I'll just leave it, and eventually a thumbnail will come up. But uh, if I click publish straight away or close, close the window as soon as it's done uh, uploading, it just vanishes. And as you see, there's a bill's two-hour video. Oh, Farm Sim Saturday. That's why. <laughs> I don't really watch his Bill's T Max's um, Farm Sim Saturday videos because I'm not really a gamer. But they're probably one of the only videos he does that I don't watch. And this one that he put up yesterday, uh, tearing apart the 110 TLB backhoe pins and plates. That's the sort of thing I would watch, because I like watching people, you know, fix things and whatnot. So, that's one I'll watch. Who oh dear, one lonely farmer's got computer problems. Ah, sweet, does his live thing. Uh, I keep wanting to catch his um, uh, live chat on a Saturday, but I'm usually busy, thanks to my time zone, like I was today. <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's just... Really? I've been making a video that long. It's just stopped and restarted, which means it's been going on for 33 and a half minutes. Ow, I didn't realize it'd been going on for that long. I've been watching the clock. Oh well. Uh, Jim is still... Uh, Fixing his vintage radios. See, I watch all sorts. There's all sorts that interest me. Jim Lindenis. Lindenis. Again, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how the name's pronounced. <laughs> I'm useless. I'm like uh, Dave on the uh, EEV blog. I'm useless at pronouncing things. Especially things I'm not sure of like that. A smoking Seaberg jukebox video one check out. Ooh. If it's smoking, that's not a good sign. Uh, yeah, I'm not, you know, vintage radios aren't really something I'd collect or repair, but I do like watching the videos because I do learn things. And uh, I do actually like to learn things. It's nothing like uh, expanding your knowledge. Where else have we got anything? No, not really. 
Oh, I am naked. But I don't have to get up in the morning because we've decided against doing a third car boot tomorrow. One, because, well, mum can't afford the pitch fee. I could. But for the stuff we've actually got left, I don't think it's worth forking out the pitch fee for. Because, like I said, we did have a fairly decent day again today. Uh, I got rid of my HP laptop for 20 quid. Uh, I don't think... Well, I probably could have squeezed a bit more than that, but... Because it needed some repairs, because it's got four missing keys on it, you know. I just figured I'd just get rid of it cheap. That's 20 quid in my pocket. Um, I sold more toy cars than I thought I would, because I put them up at 50p each and lined them up on our table, and they went for... Uh, they sold more than I thought they would. I've still got quite a few left, and I've still got quite a few here to take if I want to, which I may uh, actually take them. Uh, as for the bed, I did sleep well. I went to bed at about 12.30, and woke up at 5.30, and I slept all the way through without waking up, which is actually good for me, because I'm not sure if it was just the fact I dream a lot, or if it was something to do with the uh, comfort of, or lack of comfort on the other mattress, but I used to wake up every sort of couple of hours. It was rare on the other mattress that I'd actually sleep for so long, unless I was absolutely shad. So, uh, yeah, thumbs up for me, this mattress. My £15 pink mattress. <laughs> like I said, I'm not fussed about the colour, it's the functionality of it, and it does its job and it's a lot more comfortable so if Nemo doesn't care I don't care uh, yeah the only other thing I got at the car boot was that foot pump which I left on the car because I don't need it at the minute um, I will just say with this Lego on this video that was a bargain I, got, I bought the uh, yellow fire truck on a different stall and that cost me a tenner alone, which, in fairness, if I bought it on eBay, even without instructions like that one, I think there's a few bits missing. Yeah, there is. There's just a couple of uh, tools that go on a hook missing, but I've got shitloads over there, so... And, uh... Oh, hello, the breathing apparatus have fell out the back. It was there, but... Um... I don't think that was the right breathing apparatus on it anyway, so... I can soon change that, but... If we assume that was complete, which it near enough w is... £10 on eBay is roughly what you would pay... Whoops, I've got the camera on this skew with there. Um, somewhere I've got the red one I built up there. That's what... This yellow one's the actual set. And that's what I based that red one on. I built the red version of it. <laughs> I didn't have the um, yellow bits to do this one with. But uh, I've now got the set, and I've been looking for that for ages. But they always went for more than £10 on eBay, so that was a pain to get. And I paid 20 quid for that tub, including the um, boat with a back end kick falling off. That boat is a set, and there's at least another three sets in that box. And they're all vintage sets. And I know at least one was 99% complete. That boat's 100% complete. There's a little fire engine in there that's 99% complete. It's missing a blue steering wheel, which I've got there. Uh, and there's a Lego house in there, which I'm not sure how complete that is, but I th think most of it is there, and that house would be worth 20 quid alone if I build it up. Cause probably more than that, actually, because it's got the um, ins original instructions with it. So... That was definitely a bargain I couldn't walk away from. Anyway, I'll go into more details with that later in the other video. Uh, I don't think there's much else to talk about. Not now, anyway. Covered most things. Well, uh, I think it's something to do with these. Oh, I have just had an idea, actually, if I can find a plank of wood. I want to do something different for the Christmas display in the window, so I've got several months to build it yet. I was going to get a plank of wood, 
screw these to the plank of wood, evenly spaced apart, so I'm not really... Perhaps the length of those two centre window panes, I'd want the plank of wood. Because at least that way, if I screwed a plank of wood to the brickwork, if I could drill into that, bearing in mind that's probably a concrete lintel above there, so it might be too tough to drill into, but I can try. If not, I'll just fill in the hole I make. And uh, pop in some of these colour bulbs. And I've got an orange one in my box of bulbs under the bed. So if I did four, that would be four different colours. I can't really use the yellow ones because they're too bright. I could use the green, the blue, and a pink, and the orange one. And if I could get some more colours, like a red one, I could probably make it a bit longer. I know I can get the bulbs on eBay, but again, they're not easy to get hold of these days. And then you got to wonder if something as fragile as a light bulb is actually going, going to arrive in one piece. And in working order. Because uh, I know for a fact mail service, most mail services don't treat anything fragile carefully, you know, you stick fragile on it and it's almost like an invitation to kick it around the warehouse. <laughs> That's why a lot of the time I don't bother putting fragile on it, because I think if they know, don't know it's fragile, then they're not going to think, oh, I'm going to kick it here and drop it here and bang it against this and throw it onto the back of the van. Um, I don't think I've ever had anything arrive broken, though. Not that I can think of the Nice headshot of the cat. <laughs> what do you want to borrow? You missed me. There he is. He... No, you don't give kisses, he's doing you just stiff. Well, I've only been near Mum's dogs and you're used to the smell of them. See, if it weren't for Nemo, I'd probably have a dog up here as well. Just a small one, like, I don't know. King Charles Spaniel or a Jack Russell or something. Um, but Mr. Nemo here hates dogs. He hated it when uh, my mum was here with her little Jack Russell mini. Ooh, he really did hate it. He sort of grinned and bared it after a while and put up with it because he knew mum and the Mum and the dog weren't going anywhere, but he didn't half give the dog a good old smack with his claws sometimes. Bless him. He's my beautiful boy, though. I do love him to bits. Apart from when he's molting all over me, look, I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Cat hair everywhere. <sighs> You know, I've actually been told I've got a light fetish. <laughs> so it's actually probably true, because I do like anything that lights up. No? If I come across some sort of gadget that lights up as well, sometimes to me I turn it on like a little kid. Go, oh, it lights up as well. <laughs> I want it because it lights up. <laughs> it's got a light in it. Uh, yeah, I'm a weird person at times. But, uh, if we were all, well, suppose we're all weird in our own special little ways. But if we were all the same and all normal, life would be boring. You make a better door than a window, you know, Nemo. I could see the computer screen a lot better if your head wasn't in the way. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, I should be going over to Mum's tomorrow. We're going to empty the car out, because we probably won't be doing any more car booting until next weekend. Uh, that'll give us a week to perhaps get some more bits and bobs together. Because uh, I sold more bits than I was expecting, actually. But uh, Mum did ask today, you know... Um, does your success depend on where your stall is at the car boot? And I said, 
probably not. It's probably more to do with what you've got on it. You know, because if you've got complete and utter random crap, then you're not going to sell anything. What I think you really need to put on your stall, if you're a regular, is a mix of perhaps something collectible and things that people may need a replacement of, like some electrical goods, like, I don't know, iron, toaster, kettle, as long as they work, and you sell them at a decent price at a car boot, or a fair price. Although one thing I have learned, and I have said to Mum when we do it next week, we will not unload the car until 10.30, half an hour before the car boot actually opens. The reason being is because as soon as you get there and start unloading your car, all the ones that, are, all the dealers as we call them, all the ones that do a car boot religiously, you know, there every week, regular as clockwork, in their same spot, the dealers, they go around, especially if they haven't seen you there before or very rarely, and they'll try and get everything up they find of interest on your stall as cheap as possible and then take it to their stall and sell it at a higher price. <laughs> Granted, that is actually a pretty good idea, but I actually find that annoying myself when I'm trying to unpack and I've got like five or six bloody dealers or something around my stall wanting to buy this, that and the other for next to nothing. <laughs> I don't mind the ones that are actually honest about it because a lot of them are, you know, they're well known and they'll say, well, if you, you know, you give them a price and they'll say, here's yeah, a bit too much for me but someone else would probably pay it which is basically saying it's too much for me because I'm a dealer but you'll probably sell it to someone else at that price so, yeah, I don't mind that, you know, because they're pretty much being honest with what they are, you know, there for but uh, Mum had someone today buy a handbag. And she was acting like, you know, she was buying it for herself. And then Mum went and found it on her stall. <laughs> Which to me is a bit of a mick take. Mickey take. Oh, well, well, what can you do? Mum was, uh, if we're silly enough to accept it in the first place. Um... Another trick is to go to your local recycling centre, or dump, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I know there's one near Mum that actually has a shop on site. And uh, sometimes you can find some goodies really, really cheap in them. So if you can get to one, you can pick some stuff up there. Because uh, Mum picked a fish tank up yesterday afternoon from uh, her local recycling centre and paid two quid for it. We sold it at the car boot today, minus all the lights and everything, because the people that bought it didn't want it, so we said, well, just have the tank as it is, make us an offer on the tank as it is, and they offered 20 quid, so <laughs> buy a tank for two quid, we still keep all the electric lighting and heater and that, and, you know, make 18 quid on it, so... And uh, it's a good way to recycle, actually, because uh, that's going to be used as a vivarium, or a viv for short, for their lizard. I think I'm guessing they were looking for something bigger than what they already had. And that's better than us lugging the bloody thing home as well again. Because, uh, you know, a fish tank isn't exactly light, even when it's empty. So that was one thing we were glad that we didn't have to bring home. In fact, we didn't have to bring anything bulky home today, apart from the pasting table we used for a table and uh, the two chairs and a couple of boxes. <laughs> That's probably the emptiest the back of our car has been in the last couple of days. But we're going to empty it tomorrow and give it a good, probably a wash outside and a hoover on the inside. Uh, I'm going to check the coolant again because it keeps draining the coolant header tank for some reason. Uh, well, that was empty when I first checked it a few
few days after she got it. I topped it up and then I emptied it again, near enough, and I topped it up with some proper coolant the second time. And summer antifreeze. I don't know how summer antifreeze works. You don't get frost during summer. Anyway, unless it keeps the cold off, because obviously it does get cooler at night during summer. Maybe that's... I don't know. I don't know how coolant works, I just know you've got to put it in the engine. <laughs> well, not in the actual engine, in the cooling system. Don't put it in the actual engine, for God's sake. Oh, that's bad enough when Mum uh, hydrolocked her for over 25. Tell you what, I'll go into that story as well, and then I'll call it quits. Uh, last summer, Mum had a 2-litre diesel Rover 25. That was a decent little car. She got it from a local... Um, a local dealer, close to where she currently lives. Uh, the only thing that needed was some exhaust repair, which we had done. And that drove and ran as sweet as a nut. In fact, I drove that around the, um, the um, landlord's campsite a few times. That's pretty damn easy to drive, you know. You didn't have to give it any throttle. You just take your foot off the clutch and it'll drive you around itself at five mile an hour. Uh, Obviously, because I don't have a license, I can't legally do it, drive it on the road, but on private land, I can. Anyway, she was out in the car one day, and uh, she came to a flooded bridge, because we just had a storm in the air, a thunderstorm. So we had some flash floods around, and she tried to go through the flood under the bridge. You know, thinking she could, because all the other cars would. Or were, they were getting through fine. But what she failed to do, or what she forgot to do, I should say, is uh, to keep the revs high to stop water getting sucked into the engine. Now she let her foot off the revs and hydrolocked the engine. <laughs> that was not fun to unlock that engine. Bear in mind it's a diesel, so we couldn't take spark plugs out. We had to take diesel injectors out. And they're not, you know, when you're using primitive tools, not proper mechanics, long-reach tools, and proper um, proper um, injector tool, um, removers, etc. It's quite a chore to get them out, and in again, without breaking anything, and without damaging them. Uh, but eventually we got all four out. And of course, a note as well is to take the fuse out of the fuel pump. Otherwise, you'll spray diesel everywhere as well. Um, that was a lesson learned the hard way as well. But I got in and I turned the key and we sprayed all the water out, or what we could, and uh, siphoned what we could out of the um, air intake, put it all back together, tried to start it, but um, locked up again because there was still just enough water in the bottom of the air intake to lock it up. So again we take out the injectors and give that another the engine another turnover to blow the water out again. Put it all back together, start it up, it was a bit spluttery and after about five minutes it ran sweet as a nut again. She was lucky because she could have um, bent the con rods and bent valves and all sorts. But uh, I think the fact that she went through it with such low revs is what saved the engine from... Uh, any serious damage. I actually loved that car. It did develop a nasty rattle from which was actually due to a idler pulley. I've got a feeling a bear and had gone in one of the idler pulleys. I think a good hint to that was the fact that two of the bolts sheared off on one. So <laughs> she actually got from um, her village to town um, I think she, she went to the um, Sainsbury's petrol station to fill up with diesel and uh, went to drive away and something just went ping and she said she couldn't even steer the car. Uh, my stepdad, he managed to drive her all the way back, about eight miles back with no power steering and uh, what had happened, one of the idler pulleys you know, that um, 
that your belt goes around that drive all your alternator and your power steering pump and whatnot. One of those idle of pulleys had sheared two nuts without us knowing, and then the third bolt had just come undone and the pulley, pulley had come off and it shredded the um, belt. So uh, my stepdad managed to get the um, idle of pulley back on with one bolt and uh, we got a new belt from it, from a car place in town. I think it's Motorman it was called. No, not Motorman, he closed down ages ago. What the hell was it called? I can't remember what it's called. Called? Called now, but it's a good place. And uh, fitted that, and I'm guessing... Well, it didn't rattle when the um, idle of pulley and belt was wet, so if you'd gone through puddles, it'd stop rattling. But as soon as it dried out, you'd get a rattle, so we knew damn well it was... It probably needed a new idle of pulley, or it was probably rattling because it was only held on with one bolt. But uh, apart from that, that was a decent bloody car. That thing went through hell and back. Mum did give that a load of stick. Um, there was one time when that had uh, power problems, you know, it, they'd plant their foot and it would just cough and splutter and then eventually it might decide to get power back and kick in. And literally all I did, thanks to some advice on some Facebook groups, is uh, remove the fuel filter. We didn't have the money at the time to buy a new one, so I just removed it, cleaned it out, emptied well actually all I did was empty it out, and then flush it out with a bit of um, fresh diesel just to make sure it was all cleaned out. I didn't want to use water because I might have watered down the diesel, so I didn't think water was a good idea. And I uh, put it back together again, <coughs> primed it up, so, you know, you've got a little primer bulb on the fuel filter to fill the filter back up with diesel. And uh, away it went, and it worked fine after that. So, I have to say, I know a lot of people slag Rovers off, but that was a decent little car. <coughs> anyway, 40 odd minute video, so I'm going to turn this off. Batteries are getting low as well. I haven't got any more because I haven't charged them up yet. I haven't had a chance. So uh, actually what I think of that, I'll do that before I do anything else. So uh, thanks for watching. Say bye-bye, Nemo. Nemo, say bye-bye. Say bye to the camera. Kitty face. <laughs> Kitty eye. <laughs> Don't care. It's not a lot he cares about. Unless you're winding him up, then he cares about that. You see, you don't like this look. Is he going to do it? No, he's just going to sniff my fingers. Usually when I do things like that, he'll bite my fingers, but no. Is there something nice on there? I shouldn't think there's anything nice on there. I've been scratching my ass and picking my nose. <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding, I haven't been doing that. Yeah, so thanks for watching, and uh, big thumbs up if you liked the video, or a thumbs down if you didn't. Either way, it helps me either way, so uh, until the next video, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.